In today's adventure, we are headed to Durango, Durango, Mexico. It took us about eight hours on the bus with several stops along the way, but we finally arrived. So this is a walkable street here in Durango. It's called um, Calle Constitution, and it's about six blocks long, beautifully lined with palm trees, and it's just gorgeous. Um, this right here is the church. It's called, it's one of the biggest churches in Mexico, actually, uh, in Durango, Mexico, that is. And it's called the um, Cathedral Basilica Menor de Durango. And it was gorgeous inside. Right outside the cathedral is the Plaza de Armas. The tree to the right is the tree that I actually lost my drone in. I was able to get it back some young, nice Mexican man climbed the tree and got it out for me. Uh, and we paid him with 200 pesos, but we were pretty thankful and he was pretty nice about it. The gazebo that you see here has the tourist office on the bottom. You cannot get to the top though, unfortunately, but it was a beautiful gazebo, definitely. And now for a drone's eye view of the city taking off from Plaza de Armas. Continuing down Calle Constitution is the Durango Walk of Fame, which features the stars of several famous Hollywood movie stars um, that have made films here. Very interesting walk, a lot of famous people here. Um, according to IMDb, all or parts of 230 movies have been filmed here in Durango. At the end of the Durango Walk of Fame is a park called Paseo Las Alamitas, which is beautiful. It has a long walkway down the middle, several places to sit and enjoy the scenery or just people watch. What are we doing? With our Indipam card, I guess you get a discount. Show it everywhere you go. We're going on the teleferico here in Durango, or for those who don't like heights like me, it's the cable car of death. So the cable car ride is not all that long. We're just going to the top of that mountain that you see in front of you. La ciudad lleva el nombre de Dolores del Río en homenaje a la famosa actriz de origen duranguense. ¿Es de Durango? Así es. Fue la primera. We've arrived at the top of the uh, teleferico and now we're looking down at the city. It's a Friday. Uh, the city is beautiful and amazing. 
This is what it's like once you get to the top. Like they say, it's Friday, so there's probably not a lot going on here as much as you would see on the weekend. Here comes the lovely Paulette. You can feel the humidity. Yeah. You know, it's funny, I don't feel it when I'm walking. It's when you stop. That's when you feel it, when you stop and sit. Woo, and Mark yeah. sweats like a hog. Suey! <laughs> Can you believe she said that about me? Well, actually I can. So walking around on the streets of Durango, they're absolutely beautiful. This is just one called Hidalgo, but uh, there are many streets like this tree line, nice wide walkways, absolutely beautiful. Watch out, don't get hit by a truck. We are in another beautiful park that borders a major intersection. Um, we've come across quite a few of these in Durango and we just got here last night and only went out exploring earlier today. As Mark and I were walking around town, we found this Mercado Gomez Palacia, and it was huge. I mean, not only was it an inside uh, Mercado with rows and rows, it was outside. As you can see, you know, fruit stands, I mean, everything, your, your fruiteria, um, tons and tons of, you name it, it was there. What did you buy there? What did I buy? A couple of great plant oh yeah uh, well that was on the outside yeah when we were passing by i bought uh two grape vines small ones um and then i uh, also in another area that we were walking through i bought my sun and my moon for my wall collection in my house but uh, as you can see pinatas balloons you name it everything was there the one thing that mark was looking for and he found was a bottle of mezcal with the scorpion inside. And here we are again, still walking on Calle Constitution. Lots of shops, um, great place. I just, I thought it was beautiful. And like I said earlier, it's about six blocks long. So you'll find tons of ice cream shops, coffee shops, and souvenir shops, along with restaurants. Restaurantes. Paula and I also visited the archaeological zone. Which I thought was a disappointment, actually. I thought it was going to have a lot more um, bigger structures to it and more to see, but it did not. Here's a bird waiting for me to lose consciousness so it can peck my eyes out. The drive was about 20 minutes outside of town. From start to finish, I'd say it was about a 40 minute walk. We are at Parque Fundadora de Ferreria, and this is why we're here. 
It's pretty cool, like castle looking building. It was probably, I don't know, about a 15 minute drive outside of the main city of Durango. And now we're gonna take a look inside. I thought this park was awesome, but I love places like this that are old and just so much history to them. And it just reminds me of an enchanted garden. I'm not gonna try to pass through this little walkway without giving myself a concussion. The queen. The queen there's, has arrived. There's the queen. Right before you go into the park that we were just at was this place called Ex Hacienda La Prateria. Um, it was beautiful, arches everywhere on the inside and outside, um, big open space, a lot of older antique furniture, kind of a reminder of how people used to live. Um, the craftsmanship and the furniture was just fantastic. Uh, I believe this place is also used for community events as well but it was just beautiful inside and well worth checking out. Um, and I don't believe that we were charged anything to come in and look around. Here's an old kitchen, an, an old bed with the beautiful looking bed frame, some old doors. Um, again, I think I just really appreciated the, the craftsmanship that we see here. You wouldn't love to have this for a backyard. We visited this place called Paseo del Viejo Oeste, which is kind of a Western town, and with, along with the show here. I think we've been transported back about 150 years here in Durango. We entered this old Western town. 
Hi, sweetheart. Paul Lester discovered the Mexican version of My Little Pony. This place was pretty cool. It had some restaurants, some old-fashioned saloons that you could go into. They had a bunch of actors dressed up in the old Western style. They had another area where they had teepees and you could get your face painted if you wanted to. Here I am being held up in the saloon. Thankfully, Paulette was able to wrestle the arms away from the man and take control of the situation. Looks like trouble's brewing on Main Street. Uh, looks like a robbery is a brewing at the local bank in town. Here we are at the Pancho Villa Museum. It was pretty interesting. They had a bunch of his artifacts. It's also the congressional house for the state of Durango for a while. So he gave me a little bit of insight, Antonio, that works here. Pancho Villa was married 22 times, and he has, I think he said, 26 or 25 children. And... <laughs> What else? It either seemed like he was a lover or a player or both. I don't know. So we're going to take a tour. Check it out. Durango is famous for Pancho Villa as this was his home state. Uh, Pancho Villa by many Mexicans is thought of to be a hero or thought of to be a villain. What's your thought? Like a lot of museums in Mexico, the museum was covered in huge, huge murals. Uh, it takes a while to take it all in, but they were beautiful. So what do you think of your soup, Caldillo Durangueño? I think it's pretty good. I'm not a beef eater. And there's lots of beef in it. It's very, very tender. The flavor of the soup is very good. Um, yeah, so I had to try it because she said it was the best here where we are. And it is pretty darn good, I gotta say. A little expensive for the bowl. It's not a real big bowl, as you can see with my hand. And it was like um, $8.50, $8.75 for this little bowl. But I'd say come, come and try it. All right, it's kind of a specialty meal in Durango, so we had to check it out. 
I know Mark and I had talked about for months now putting Durango on our list. I think it was probably more so uh, on Mark's list than mine, but I was pleasantly surprised. I loved how everything looked, especially at night, lit up, people walking around, you know, um, just friends gathered together, vendors in the park, children out playing, uh, the whole vibe um, is wonderful. That's what I love about Mexico is that whole vibe that you get with family and friends and, you know, people just gathering together and uh, people were very friendly too, of course, uh, which we find all through Mexico. Will there be a second trip to Durango? Maybe. Pancho Villa, like I said, is known uh, in the state of Durango because that's where he uh, grew up. However, scorpions are also known in Durango, which I have a horrible fear of ever running into one. Luckily, during our trip, we did not. The only one that we saw was the one that was in the bottle of mezcal that Mark picked up. Here we are back in the Plaza de Armas at night to check out not one, not two, not three, but four fountains. They were beautiful. My thoughts on Durango is that I can see why people like living here. It's a beautiful town. Um, I had high expectations for it and it met and exceeded my expectations. There are many tree-lined streets, wide walkways, beautiful buildings, beautiful cathedrals. Um, just everywhere you look, there's something to, to look at. In this picture, there is Christ the Redeemer, the Eiffel Tower, the Leaning Tower Pizza, the Taj Mahal, and the Statue of Liberty. Can you find them all? This is a center divider depicting Durango's film history. Ten minutes before this hailstorm, it was about 90 degrees outside, so the weather changed pretty quickly here and just as quickly cleared back up. We hope you enjoyed our Durango video.